Good afternoon, everyone. I am currently in Liverpool with my son, introducing him a bit to the United Kingdom. Of course, he's been here before, but I'm showing him a little bit more. In the meantime, the Osiris probe is on its way for a rendezvous with the Apophis asteroid after rendezvousing with the Bennu asteroid and dropping off samples earlier in 2023. I'm going to share a couple of disconcerting facts with you. Number one, if there is any sort of bacterial life hiding away in that Bennu sample, we don't know if it's there because NASA still can't get inside the sample as I'm recording this. Number two, the rendezvous that you are about to see here in just a moment taking place in 2029, well, regardless of what NASA says, this incredibly close encounter is going to remain extremely hazardous to our planet. Let me explain why. Now, the first thing you need to remember about Apophis is just how damn big it is. Even if you're not really familiar with London landmarks, I think this gives you a pretty good idea of what we're looking at here in terms of size. By way of comparison, the Chelyabinsk meteor, the one that created a nuclear-sized explosion in the atmosphere that caused widespread devastation in Siberia, well, it was 18 meters across about 59 feet as opposed to over 1100 feet in diameter for this asteroid. Also, as you can see, it's passing uncomfortably close to our planet. In fact, the closest that any asteroid that we know of anyway that's this big has passed to our planet in recorded history. Let me say that again. An asteroid of this size has not passed this close to our planet at any time in recorded history, at least as far as we know. Apophis will pass so close that it will go inside the orbits of our geosynchronous satellites. That's an insane close call in solar system standards. And what would happen if the asteroid were just a little off course, a little bit different in terms of its trajectory than we thought? Well, the effect would be nothing short of cataclysmic, at least for the region that it hit. And when we're talking about regions, it's actually a pretty damn big region. Let's say, for example, that it hit in the Atlanta metro region. Let's go ahead and simulate the effects with my favorite little online asteroid impact simulator, Kaboom! Well, if you live anywhere in Atlanta or in the Atlanta suburbs, or indeed just about anywhere in central Georgia, you are most probably dead within seconds from the fireball alone. Of the 4 million people in the Atlanta metro area, 2.4 million would die instantly. Another million would suffer between second and third degree burns. Clothes would spontaneously catch fire within a 26 mile radius of the impact zone. It is a horrifying thing created by an explosion no less than four gigatons in strength. We're talking about 80 times the explosive force of the most powerful nuclear blast ever set off in human history, the Tsar Bomba. Or, to put it another way, we're talking 200,000 Hiroshima bombs, a fireball the likes of which has never been seen in human history, and a fireball that would utterly consume all of central Georgia, and set off a firestorm that would be extremely difficult to contain in anything resembling a reasonable time frame. And we are just getting started. Anybody who survived the blast would be greeted by a 272 decibel shock wave that would be sufficient to kill another 400,000 people, or essentially everybody still left alive after the fireball, and then any structures still surviving would be wiped off the face of the earth by the most powerful windstorm 
ever experienced in recorded human history. We're talking wind speeds as high as a thousand miles per hour to anything unfortunate enough to be within 13 miles of ground zero and anything within a 39 mile radius would be subjected to the equivalent of an EF5 tornado, which is sufficient to destroy almost any structure that mankind can create. An 80 mile diameter circle of utter devastation where very little would be left over except for a raging firestorm that would almost certainly have some impact on the climate. Perhaps a mild version of a nuclear winter, but the planet would certainly be impacted by a firestorm of this magnitude. And to make matters even worse, if this asteroid were to impact off the coastline, well, depending on how far away you were from ground zero, you could be dealing with a tsunami as high as 2,000 feet. Okay, so I hope I've gotten all of your attentions. So here's the deal. Why has NASA ruled out the chance of an impact given how close this asteroid is going to be passing to our planet? Well, because gravitational affected orbits are very easy to predict. We do it all the time, not just with planets, but also with near-Earth asteroids that could theoretically present a danger. But here's the problem. Asteroids don't always remain exactly on the same trajectory that gravity would dictate. There are other things that impact an asteroid's path. For example, for those astronomers who continue to insist that a Muamua was an asteroid, or not some sort of extraterrestrial light sail, well, they explain a Muamua's deviation of almost 40,000 kilometers as being caused by some sort of outgassing. Outgassing from something we couldn't even observe, but outgassing that they insist could have happened with an asteroid. So if something like that, something we can't even see, caused an asteroid to divert that much, it means that Apophis most definitely could divert by up to 40,000 kilometers, which by the way is almost the same distance that it's going to miss us by. And there are other factors that can impact an asteroid's trajectory as well, such as a random collision with a smaller asteroid or a small meteoroid that we can't even detect. The long and the short of it is, we cannot, with any sort of confidence, predict exactly where Apophis is going to go between now and 2029 when we are going to have our close encounter. Perhaps Apophis will stay exactly on course, or perhaps it will even deviate away from our planet. But if it deviates even a little bit towards the Earth, we may find that it's on a collision course before we can actually do anything about it. So what do we do about this? Well, we've already demonstrated how to change an asteroid's trajectory. We already know how to do that. However, we're not even in the process of building a new DART probe. And the clock is ticking. We have five years to get ready for Apophis to arrive. And if something were to happen between now and then, we need to be adequately prepared. And even if Apophis doesn't present any sort of immediate threat, it's still a great idea to have something in place. Just one DART probe would be enough, preferably in lunar orbit, perhaps in close proximity to the lunar gateway, as I explained in another video that I released a few days ago. That would be adequate protection against an asteroid like Apophis. Maybe not something huge, but we don't know of anything huge that's likely to be hitting our planet anytime soon. But given the fact that we do know that a relatively dangerous asteroid is on its way here and is going to give our planet a close shave unlike any that we have ever received in recorded history, it would just make sense to be prepared. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon so I can keep content coming to you. And as always, stay angry about space.